Well, good morning, folks, or in this case, good afternoon. I hope everyone's doing well. I am going to be doing a late Bible reading today. I got an entire chapter to read for people, even though it's technically chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, that are really, truly important. But I will be reading only one chapter today. Um, we will not be going into this for the full hour because I started late. So you, you all may read a chapter or two. It all just depends. I'm reading out of 1 Corinthians, but my main focus is my gaming stream because I screwed up and missed my normal Bible reading. But I do try. Keyword, I try to do my best to stick on schedule. For those in my community who know I'm going live. Um, but anyhow, we're going to hit the button. The stupid button. Um, so, lawsuits among believers. This is strictly among the family in Christ on this part, but there's a scripture, a very strict scripture I'll get to in a minute. But believers who call themselves brothers and sisters in Christ should not be following lawsuits against each other. And if you are, why are you taking them before a worldly judge? Because one day you yourselves will judge the wicked of the world. So that's all I can and will state on that front before I go into the chapter. So, if any of you has a dispute against another, how dare you take it to court before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Or don't you know that the saints will judge? Yes, the saints. That is referring to the disciples and the believers in Christ. Regardless of it being 2,000 years after Christ's death, saints are people who fully trust in and believe in God. That's who and what a saint is. A saint of God, a saint of Christ, that is what we as believers in Christ are. And so, or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? You tell me not to judge you, world. You tell me not to judge you. Yeah, I got to be careful that while I'm on this earth. But guess what? When the Bible has already written down everything that you're going to do before you do it, every sin that you're going to fall into, because it's nothing new underneath the sun that man has not done before. And if you're not a believer... And you've not actually redeemed your life, and you were not redeemed. If you've not asked Christ to basically come into your life and become the Lord and Savior of your life, well, logically, that's on you. Or don't you know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the trivial cases? No. No, we as saints are not unworthy to judge the trivial, pathetic, and petty cases. But when we do so, we need to be in the right mindset, the right spiritual mentality. And I will state this. I will tell you now. I have a trillion and one things against the people of the world. So I'm glad I'm not God himself. Because if I was God himself, sorry folks, you and everyone else in it, including myself, would no longer exist. And there would be no rebirth. Re there'd be no start again from scratch. You'd, you'd just all be wiped the flip out and nothing would be redone. I'd go somewhere completely different and I'd just completely demolish Satan right then and there because I, I would have the ultimate power. And I wouldn't even bother with the trivial category of dealing with people like us. I would just completely demolish him, not allow him to re be born or restart as an angel, because he'll never restart as an angel. And so when I start a new world, I won't have to deal with the crap I had to do with, deal with here on this planet. You better be thankful 
I'm not God, because that is how, that is how I would handle humanity. Humanity is a laughing, mocking joke. Be thankful. Be very thankful that no Christian on this earth is God himself. You do not understand the lives we have had to live, the little places we have come from to accept Christ as our Savior. So be God-given thankful that we're not God. Because trust me, I may be a new creation, but I'm not beyond having the ability to close all emotions and feelings and heartfelt things down from my human being body and completely saying that if I was God himself, and I'm not, and I'll never be, and I don't want to be, but I'm just saying if I was God Almighty, my Father in Heaven, I would not have restarted with Noah. I would not have restarted with Noah. I would not have even saved Noah. I would not have even redone all that. I would have just wiped everything and everyone out. Meaning no one would be born today. Myself included. So... That's just a fair warning. Be thankful that none of us Christians are actually God himself. And that God himself is only the one true God. And I'm thankful he is because he has more mercy. More, thank, or more mercy and more forgiveness to give than what I could ever hope to give. I love people. But when you idiotic, deadbeat people upset me, I'm only human. I have an immediate automatic response to dealing with trash guess what i do with trash i burn it or i toss it the flip out that's as simple as that and when i say burn it i literally go dry grab grab me a trash pit and i burn trash or i throw it in a dumpster because that's where trash belongs one of the two cases that's what trash is and that's where trash goes that's my thoughts of dealing with trash i don't have the patience to deal with people the only reason I dull people is because God doesn't really give me a choice. And when you're a believer in Christ, you submit to Him. You don't submit to yourself. You don't answer to your own will. You don't answer to man's will. You answer to God's will. But be thankful that no believer in Christ is God Himself. Because God Himself has more mercy than any Christian will ever be able to give. Any, more mercy than any believer on this earth will be capable of giving. But I will tell you this now. If you don't accept that free gift that God has offered you, who is only trying to give you a better life, then ultimately, here's a full warning. Your end is already foretold, child of Satan. And I'm not speaking nicely. I'm laughing because I know where the children of Satan will end up going. And unlike people of today, I have a little bit harsher outlook on this life. And even as a Christian, I'm a realist. And know there's no better realistic type of nature than knowing who God is, trusting in God, believing in God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But then again, also realizing how evil people this world can be. There's a massively big difference. Um, but anyhow, guys. Um, oh, hey, Rockstar. Sorry for not um, answering to you, dude. Didn't have my uh, Mix It Up app on. That's my fault. Um, so we'll judge the world. And if the world is judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the trivial cases? Don't you know that we will judge angels? Yes, guys, we will one day set before the thrones of God and set pretty much basically our basically on our own thrones that God gives us, and we will judge the angels and the people of the world, and that's a God-given fact. Um, how much more matters of the of this life? Nothing really. Nothing else matters on the on this earth and in this life, really, other than making sure I take care of my wife at the end of the day and maybe helping those who need to be helped or defend the weak, defend those who are incapable of fighting and defending themselves. Other than that, there's nothing else more really worth paying attention. Unless people want to come to Christ and accept salvation, that's the only other thing I have to be worried about, guys. Um, I'm trying to make sure my thing's going off good, awesome. 
those um, um, so if you have such matters do you appoint as your judges those who have no standing in the church I say this to your shame can it be that there is not one wise person among you who is able to ar to ar arbitrate between fellow believers? Can it be that there is not one wise person among you who is able to arbitrate between fellow believers? No, there's plenty of wise people among the body of Christ that can arbitrate between fellow believers. There's no reason that believers need to be going before, before a worldly joke of a deadbeat court system. I'm sorry, but believers are not called to be in the world's court system or to have anything to do with the world itself other than being in this world because we have no choice and to keep passing through it and being a witness and a minister. Um, Do you appoint as your judges those who have no standing in the church? Yeah, a lot of people do. That's why I still say that people in the government are a joke. I don't appoint any of them to be my judge. I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is not one wise person among you who is able to ar arbitrate between fellow believers instead of brothers go instead brothers go to court? against brother and therefore and therefore and that before unbelievers sorry siblings but if you ever go before a court system you're standing before unbelievers who just don't care about you or me so at the end of the day Christians have no place going or being in court against anyone but ultimately I do know God is our ultimate authority God is our ultimate power. So, at the end of the day, we don't need the judges standing before us. As it is, to have legal disputes, and I gotta make sure, okay, yeah, it's working good. Um, okay, cool. Against one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, yeah, no. I'm not going to be wrong, but I'm not going to be cheated, Father. Sorry. I stand up for the weak. I stand up for those who are, who are incapable of doing it for themselves. That's what I will always do. I have a voice of boldness who ain't afraid of stepping on toes, who ain't afraid of crushing fingernails, and who ain't afraid of breaking someone's foot to get the point across. I have a boldness in my voice. I'm sorry. But if I'm going to lose my crap, or if they're going to cheat me, they're going to be judged. And I will judge them while I, face, while I live on this earth. So that way when I enter into the kingdom of heaven, you already know where I stand on my standpoint as I judge people. And as I literally stand before to judge them. So, can it be that there is not one wise person? I already read that crap. Um, as it is, to have legal disputes against one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourselves do wrong and cheat. Yeah, if brothers and sisters in Christ are going to court against one another, you are doing wrong and you are cheating others. But I'm referring to the world when I say, yeah, I'll do what I gotta do. Um, not my brothers and sisters in Christ. I could care less about that. At the end of the day, they're gonna do what they're gonna do and there's nothing I can do about it. Don't you know that the unrighteous will not don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be deceived. No sexually immoral people, no idolaters, no adulterers, or males who have sex with males. So basically no males who have sex with males, no thieves, no greedy people, no drunkards, no verbally abusive people. Yeah. I speak up and I stand up against people. And if I got to use my mouth to do it, I'll do it. My, my tongue's a double-edged sword. I can speak life or I can speak curses. And when I speak curses, they're Old Testament curses. And here's the thing. 
me find that again. A verbally abusive pupil, there's actually a proper phrase for that. Vulgar people. Vul vulgar speaking people is the correct translation. Because it's more verbally abusive people is a deadbeat joke. Um, it's a more liberal, sensitive to your ear. Um, hey, look, I'm incapable of growing in my education. Hey, look, I, I can't. I can't understand the words of God because apparently I'm not a true believer and uh, I don't want to truly try to understand the more um, difficult languages that are older to get the point of what's being said. One of the things I love about the King James, or well, the New King James specifically, is I can understand the New King James a lot better than I can. The King James, and I will state this here and now, King James and New King James are one of the same, just a little bit a little bit more modern, but at the same time, it also keeps to the harshness the King James version of the Bible. And all these new more or all these more modern, newer Bibles, they may have an updated English language, but at the end of the day, they're nothing more than simple words to tickle people's ears and make them feel good. So when it says um, a verbal abuse of people, recheck yourself. Here, I'll do it for you. Give me a minute, because the actual um, word that goes with that, and I'll even use a new King James instead of King James. How's that sound, folks? Because apparently um, people want to say, oh, well, King James is false or inaccurate. No, no, no. King James ain't false. King James ain't inaccurate. What's inaccurate and false is the people of this world who are hypnotized and possessed by demons and the devil doctrines and know really at the end of the day nothing about the word of God or scripture. You can claim to be a professor, you can claim to be this, you can claim to be that, but ultimately at the end of the day, you know nothing. Nor do you fully have an understanding of the Bible. Mm. All right, so here's the King James version of this very scripture. Mm. So it's 7 through 10, pretty much. Let me find 7 through 10. Now, therefore... There is utterly a fault among you, because you go, go to the law with one another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? If it's a brother in Christ, you turn the other cheek. If it's a people of the world, I'm sorry, I'll fight you tooth and nail. I'm told not to resist an evil person, but it's mainly referring to actual the case of dealing with losing your life, that type of persecution. I'm sorry, or even physical abuse. I will not resist an evil person at that point because look, here's the thing. I will look at you, laugh, and say, thank you, Father, for allowing me to go through what I go through because ultimately, that's what we're going to go through, physical persecution, abuse, and beatings, and even possible floggings or killings. People are unaware of it. People don't care to hear what's going on. But in the coming days, months, and ages, or not even ages, but I guarantee you in the next six months to at most a year and a half, there's going to be a lot more of a hell on earth that breaks loose. Six months to a year and a half in that time frame, and I can guarantee you, that is a time frame I'm guaranteeing you. Not by my word alone, but by knowing the scripture, by knowing the Bible, by knowing what's going on, the signs of the, signs of the times. Um, know ye that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, nor the, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. You heard that, right? Nor the effeminate men, basically. So if you're an effeminate man, guess what? You might as well kiss your seat in heaven goodbye because you're not inheriting it. Yeah, I'm calling you folks out. 
You either repent, turn away from that lifestyle, or you won't inherit. Have fun practicing a false doctrine, a devil doctrine. Have fun practicing your false, fake religion. Christianity is not going to tolerate your lifestyles. Nor adulterers, nor feminine, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. Shall inherit the kingdom of God, and su and such some of you were. Revilers is a mocker, someone who mocks God, someone who mocks the word of God. So again, the verses that end that's in. Let me find the scripture here, and I'll do you guys a better. Verse ten. No thieves, greedy people, drunkards. And right there again, the New Age translations are a deadbeat joke when it concerns tickling people's ears. God ain't here to tickle your ears, guys. The Holy Spirit isn't here to tickle your ears. The Holy Spirit is here to tell you what needs to be said. Verbally abusive does not exist unless you're using vulgarity. If you're using vulgarity and you're doing it in a very ungodly way, Those people won't inherit the kingdom of God. These are the people. These are the names and the types of group that will never inherit the kingdom of God ever. Unless they repent of these actions. Or extortioners. Or swindlers, basically. Swindlers and extortionists or extortioners are trash. They're a joke. They think they can do what they want to you and get away with it. No. No. I'm sorry, over my dead body. Have fun. Because guess what? I'm given the legal right in this country. And guess what? I don't answer to my government. And I will pick up gun. And I will fight and defend my household. No one will ever extort me. Or my household. Period. That's simple. That goes for Twitch as well. You will not extort me or my household. And when you think about coming towards my, my household or my, my turf. And thinking you can extort me. Like I said, Second Amendment gives me the legal right for defense. It's an open carry state in my state. Red Law State is a joke when it concerns Red Law because they think that they can just call the police when people think they're in danger. Guess what? In my state, I actually have a legal right to shoot a cop if I feel like he's actually a harm to me or my household. And guess what? I'm within my legal liberty of, the, of uh, de using a form of distinction to consider him a threat. So let me tell you something. I'm the head of my household. And my headset just died, I think. That's fine. I'll have to charge it. A cop is considered a threat. A worldly non-believer, heathen, pagan, devil-worshipping cop or pig is a threat towards my household when they think they can do what they want. When they think they can obey the laws of the government and get away with it, and when they think they can come on my turf and arrest me for something that's against the word of my God, or against how I stand for my God and how I stand for my faith in Christ, have fun, because guess what? You'll be shot dead for being a threat towards my wife and my household. And that's what I can and will do. As someone who has a legal right in my country. So I guess I'm going to have to find, well, that bites. Oh, well. So you guys will hear it in a minute. I'm turning on my thing, so give me a minute. And actually, I'll just keep an eye on the stream. No thieves, okay, I've already read that, that don't matter. And some of you used to be like this. Some of you used to be like this, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of, God, the Spirit of our God. But guess what? If you go back to that lifestyle, you can't keep um, living for Christ and living that lifestyle. So if you were once like this and then you chose to come to Christ but you didn't yet want to go back to that lifestyle and claim, oh, I'm redeemed, oh, I'm redeemed, oh, I'm forgiven. No, you're not because you're still a heathen. That's simple, folks. Sorry, get over it. Um, 
Y'all think I'm going to be nice with my words? No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you how it is. Glorifying God in body and spirit. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me. We are to glorify God in our body. Meaning, we are not to commit the acts the heathens of this world commit. In body and in spirit. Since the Holy Spirit dwells within us and lives within our bodies. The second you commit a sin against the body. You've condemned yourself. And you're sinning against Christ. And you're basically making Christ commit that same sin. And so here's what I will say to you. Say shame on you. And unless you repent, may the fires of everlasting, may the everlasting fires of the eternal lake of fire consume you for all eternity. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered. I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will do away with both of them. However, the body is not for sexual immorality. The body is not for homosexuality or any of their categories involved in that situation. But for the Lord and the Lord for the body, God raised up the Lord and will also raise up or raise us up by his power. Don't you know that your bodies are a part of Christ's body? So should I take a part of Christ's body? And make it a prostitute? Absolutely not! Yeah, that was me yelling. Absolutely not. Don't you know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one with her body? For scripture says, the two will become one flesh. Because you've already married when you did that. Congratulations. And there is the biblical New Testament to state when you marry or when you even have sexual fornication or commit sexual immorality with a prostitute. You've just then married that prostitute. So by the laws of God, you can no longer go marry another woman unless that woman or that man dies. And in the case of that woman, she cannot marry another man or touch another man physically. But anyone joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the person who commit or the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own. Again, you are not your own. Your body, your spirit, everything about you as a believer in Christ is not yours. For you were bought at a price, so glorify God with your body. There's also another part to that, and you know what? I'll just go ahead and continue that next chapter just for the heck of it. Principles of marriage. A word to the unmarried. I'm done being nice to people about this. People need to wake up. Now in response to the matters you wrote about, about is it good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman? But because sexual immorality is so common, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife. And each, it does nowhere in the word of God, tell you to go have sexual relations with another man or a woman to have another woman in that manner. Nowhere. And likewise, a wife to her own husband. Or to her husband. A wife does not have the right over her own body. No wife does, and no husband has the right over his own body, for we are not our own being. And that's me just quoting it from biblical memory, guys. Um, but her husband does. In the same way, a husband does not have right over his own body, but his wife does. 
do you not do or do not deprive one another except when you agree for a time to devote yourselves to prayer then come together again otherwise satan may tempt you because of your lack of self-control i say this as a concession not as a command i wish that all people were as i am but each has his own gift from god I wish that all people were as I am. This is Paul speaking, Apostle Paul. He wishes everybody was able to abstain from sexual morality by being abstinent, by being pure, by not needing or desiring a woman, but by seeking the kingdom of heaven and God alone. That is what he wishes. And I encourage people who are still pure and never touched a woman and a woman who's never touched a man and you're in the faith, Seek God with all thine heart, soul, and mind. And literally to hell with what the world says about your gift, about your purity. Because honestly, that purity is more of a symbol that you stand for God and you answer to God and that you are truly for God and his kingdom. And that's why I said to hell with the world and everything they had to say about it. Because their matters, their concerns, their voice. Yeah, I just said it. The voice of the world does not matter, guys. Their voice does not honestly matter at the end of the biblical day. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all people, people were as I am, but each has his own gift from God. One person has this gift, another has that. A word to the unmarried. I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain as I am, referring to Apostle Paul. But if they do not have self-control, they should seek, or they should marry, since it is better to marry than to burn with desire. Now let me specify for those who think, oh, the word just says to marry. No. If anyone who has any form of intelligence, they would understand the word says to marry a man. Now where does it state that God told you to marry a woman, or a man to marry another man? Nowhere in the word of God does it ever hint that he created two men for for each other or two women for each other or for a man to go become what willy-nilly he desires or a woman to go become willy-nilly what he desires in this screwed up demonically joke possessed devil worshiping world where to be what we were at birth we were designed created and formed in our mother's womb and for the satans and the devils and the demons who possess these people and who are controlling your minds. Back to hell you should go. Because honestly. No. That's a spiritual. It's a demonic spirit. That has possessed people to think like they do. That can be confirmed in Old Testament. And even in the New Testament. As you've all just seen and heard. Um, I say, okay, well, let's reread it. I say to, an unmar to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain as I am. But if they do not have self-control, they should marry a man. Or, well, in this case, to the unmarried, since it's referring to the unmarried in general. A an unmarried man should marry an unmarried woman. If it's a widow or a widower, a widower is a man. A widow is a female. A widow, a, a female, uh, basically... The female part of that whole ordeal, a widow should go remarry, and a widower should go try to find himself a wife. A widow should go find herself a husband. But if they do not have self-control, they should marry, since it is better to marry than to burn with passions and desires. And by the way, that, that passion and that desire will never be quenched. Sorry, guys, that passion and desire, once it's been awoken, it's always there until you hit a certain physical age, and then I would assume by that point it's going to die down a bit. About married people, to the married I give this command, not I, but the Lord. A wife is not to leave her husband. But if she does leave, she must remain unmarried. The same should be said to a husband. All right. Her husband, or... She must, she must remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And like I just said, the same could be said to a husband who is his wife. He should not remarry unless he's to be reconciled to his wife. All right? Um, all 
And a husband is not to divorce his wife. But I, not the Lord, say to the rest, if any brother has an unbelieving wife, and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. Also, if any woman has an unbelieving husband, and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce her husband. For the unbelieving husband is made holy by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, the ho they are holy. But the unbelievers... Unbeliever leaves, but if the unbeliever leaves, let him leave. A brother or a sister is not bound to, bound in such cases. God has called you to live in peace. Honestly, I'm not going to call them a brother and sister because if they're not actually born again believers, they're nothing more than a neighbor, and that is biblical. They're nothing more than a neighbor to me. I'm to love my neighbors myself. Yeah, I love people. I love them. I hate their lifestyles and I hate their sin. I'm just going to be flat out blunt. As blunt can be with it. And I don't love stupid people. You want to treat me and you want to act stupid? I'll treat you like you're stupid. And I'll treat you like you're literally a nothing more than an ant to step on. And that's what I'll treat you as. If you're going to act like you're stupid and belittle me and make fun of me and mock me, I'll treat you as nothing more than an ant. I won't give you the love you're deserving of because you're not worthy of it in my eyes. God's eyes you may be, but my eyes you ain't going to disrespect me and be treated with love. You can disrespect Christ all you want, but when you deal with me, I'm man. When you deal with me, I'm a man at heart that is willing to go to war for what I believe in. So I'm not willing to love someone when I'm at war. I'll sooner kill someone in war than I will love them. And I won't think twice about what I had to do. Nor will their life affect me for having to take it. Nor anyone close to them, the loved ones and whatnot. That is how much of a person I am in my faith of Old Testament. To take a person's life even though I've never did so yet. But when the time comes, I'm going to laugh. Because here's the thing. I'm already psychotic and nuts as is. As a person of this earth. Who has to live on this stupid earth. Because of the people I have to deal with every day. But if the world ever decides they want to wage war physically, and I'm ever forced to fight, oh, I'm not God. I won't have mercy. I won't have kindness. And I won't have forgiveness in the state of war. There's an old term called being vetted or blooded is another term I think it's called. It's where you basically kill the person and you bathe in their blood pretty much. That's an Old Testament. Well, maybe not Old Testament Bible thing. But it's basically where you blood them, or you're pretty much blooded. You got your first kill. But the original medieval outlook on it is once you've killed them, you look them dead square in the eyes as they're passing on, and you just watch them. And I'm sorry. The only thing I'd be concerned about is their soul. But if they've made their choice in this life, and they wanted to wage war against you, then I don't have a concern in this earth to give. I'm sorry. That's just people I don't have a care for. If you want to fight me, and it comes to that point, what happens to you happens to you. It ain't my fault. That's yours. You're responsible for your own actions. Um, but if she does not leave, she, she must remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. We covered that. But I, not the Lord, say to the rest, if any man, if any brother has an unbelieving wife, yeah, a brother... That, that, that woman won't be considered my sister because she's an unbelieving heathen is exactly what she'll always be. And she is willing to live with him. He must not divorce her. Also, if any woman has an unbelieving husband, he ain't my brother. He's an unbelieving heathen. And so would the woman be in that case. And he is willing to live with her. She must not divorce her husband for the unbelieving hus husband is made. Yeah, you say that, Paul, but I know what the scriptures say otherwise. Um, but this is definitely true. The unbeliever can be brought to salvation by just believing, or by just the, the Christian living with that unbeliever. But here's a word from God. This ain't from Paul. This ain't from me. Do not be unequally yoked. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Do not be unequally yoked. We are not called here to be unequally yoked with people. We as believers are to be married to a believer. 
the unbelievers can 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 uh, can continue to marry themselves into heathendom, but as Christians, we need to continue to marry ourselves back into Christendom, or back into our family in Christ. Because I refuse to ever acknowledge marrying an unbeliever, um, and I will never promote a believer in Christ marrying an unbeliever. I'm standing fully against that. I don't care what my wife's church promotes. Paul gave that command, not God. Paul said it as a suggestion, not a command. If any... Mm, I'm done reading that part. I've read it twice now, three times maybe. All right. For the unbelieving husband is made holy by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy... No, they're not holy, and they will never be considered biblically holy unless they've accepted salvation. But if the unbeliever leaves, let him leave. A brother or sister, again, oh, okay, so you're saying a brother or sister is not bound in such cases. They're saying that if Paul is saying if the unbeliever leaves, well, then let the unbeliever heathen leave. Because at that point, they're not worth two salts. At that point, they weren't worth your time. And that alone would be God just showing you they weren't worth your time. Um... A brother and sister in Christ is not bound to that person in such cases. God has called you to live in peace. Wife, for all you know, you might save your husband. No, wife won't save no one. Husband won't save no one. The Holy Spirit and God and Christ will save someone. Not the wife, not the husband. Various situations of life. Let each one live his life in the situation the Lord has assigned. When God called him, my headset's dead, so if there are people talking, please forgive me. Hey, Brother Jeremy, sorry for ignoring you. I was not trying to ignore you, dude. That is my, um, well, yeah, more afternoon. My apologies, Brother Jeremy. Please forgive me for that. That is my fault. Um, currently, um... <laughs> My headset died on me, so I'm not able to use my headset, so I can't really hear what's going on in the background with my Mix It Up app. That headset was promised to live and last for 48 hours of gameplay regardless. Well, sadly, it only lasted barely maybe a total gameplay of maybe 14 hours. It didn't even last 48 hours, which is a deadbeat joke. That makes me want to return it and get my money back. Um... That each one live his life in the situation the Lord assigned when God called him. This is what I command in all the churches. Was anyone already circumcised when he was called? He should not undo his circumcision. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? He should not get circumcised. Circumcision, physical circumcision, does not matter. And uncircumcision does not matter. Keeping God's command, commands is what matters. Let each of you remain in the situation in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Don't let it concern you. But if you can become free, by all means, take the opportunity. For he who is called by the Lord as a slave is the Lord's freedman. You're good, no worries. All right, well, thank you, Brother Jeremy, for at least paying attention or at least staying around and sticking in the channel. Like I said, I've already chose that this month out of little out of the little income I do get, because I've not received a lot. I'm going to go ahead and actually every month I'm going to go ahead and try to at least start giving people. Now I won't be able to give a lot of them, but I'm gonna at least give about twenty five dollars worth of gifted subs, and I will select the people I'm gonna give them to. Because they're the most well-known people in my channel. So Foxhound, congratulations, buddy. You're almost in here daily. Thank you for being a part of my community. Thank you for being a part of my channel. So I will definitely be giving you a subscription in the days and the months to come, dude. Thank you again. Jeremy, I will be gifting you one as well. I know Nicole will be getting one. There's a few other people broken envy just because of the simple fact that um, he's always in here with me. There's a lot of people. Theatine. These people who are low income, I'm going to take out of my funds regardless and give people. Even though I don't really have it, I'm still going to give it because I feel like these people deserve to be able to watch my channel without having to deal with ads. So that's a kindness that I'm going to do for my community. 
Um, Friedman. Likewise, he who is called a, as a free man is Christ's slave. I've always been free. I've always been free. But here's the thing, guys. I may have once been bound in sin, but I was never an actual slave. Okay? I may have been a slave to sin at one point in my life, and we may always still fleshly struggle with it. Alright? But Paul writes, I may be a child of God, and the Bible may call me a friend of God, but I consider myself Christ's slave. That's what I consider myself, because it's only right. And I do it because that's what I consider myself to be only worthy of. Because, honestly, I screw up enough on this earth. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of people. Do not become slaves of people. You were bought at a price. Brothers and sisters, each person is to remain with God in the situation in which he was called. And about the, about the unmarried and the widows. Now about, oh yeah, Twitch, you can kiss my butt. I don't care. I'm still going to read the scripture. About the virgins, I have no command from the Lord, but I do give an opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is faithful because of the present distress I think and when I say and when Paul says distress it's referring to the simple fact of how the world is if you're a virgin and you've never tasted the flesh of that manner and you've never been with if, if a man's never been with a woman and you're a virgin and if you're a virgin woman and you've never been with a man as Paul is saying, the stress of this world or the times that we're in, the distress, the distress of this world, just remain single, remain pure, remain as you are for God. To heck with the people of this world and their opinions about you and who you are in Christ, because they don't matter at the end of the day. The only opinion that matters is Christ's opinion for you and of you. Um... I have no command from the Lord, but I do give an opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is faithful. Because of the present distress, I think it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be released. Amen. Are you released from a wife? Do not seek a wife. And oaf, if people understood the fleshly problems that you would fight if you're given that type of command there, brother, or that type of opinion there, brother Paul. However, if you do get married, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she, is not, she has not sinned. But such people will have trouble in this life. That's what people don't get. People in this life who are married are going to have problems on this earth and in this lifetime. Not that I'm telling you not to marry, but I'm encouraging you. To remarry if you can and well if you're young like me and you don't think you can fight the fleshly battles definitely remarry it's better to marry than to burn eternally um but as christ or as paul is saying it's better to not marry and in some cases i honestly know that as a christian man if i were to lose my wife at any point in my life in the next five to ten years whether it be by death whether it be by childbirth or something I ain't remarrying, and there's a good God-given reason for that, guys. I don't want to remarry at that point. There ain't a reason or a need or a desire. I've already encountered... What I wanted once in my life, and why I love my wife. I definitely love her beyond passion and beyond reason. I also understand that... It makes our life very, very busy, and it makes it hard to manage your time even more so. Um, but whether you're married or unmarried, you're going to have troubles. Whether you're a married man or a married woman, you're going to have troubles on this earth. Whether you're not married and you're remaining celibate and pure and single for God, then you're still going to encounter problems and tr struggles and temptations and fights on this earth. However, if you do get married, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But such people will have trouble in this life. That is true. And I am not trying to spare you. 
or no, I and and I am trying to spare you. My apology. This is what I mean, brothers and sisters. The time is limited. So from now on, those who have wives should be as though they had none. So from now on, those who have wives should be as though they had none. Oh, had wives or had a wife. So they don't have no more because something happened. Okay. As though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those those who weep as though they did not weep. And those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they didn't own anything. And those who use the world as though as though they did not make full use of it. For this world in its current form, thank God, is passing away. I want you to be without concerns. The unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord. How he may please the Lord, but the unmarried man is concerned about the things of the world. Hmm? I think there's a better translation for that, folks. It's normally... Let me rephrase that, because I could have swore that said something else. And those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it, for this world is in its current form is passing away. I want you to be without concerns. The unmarried man is concerned about the... Oh, okay, nope, I read that wrong. The unmarried man is concerned about the things. So it's the unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord because he has more time to do the Lord's will. How he may please the Lord... But the married, there we go, I read wrong. But the married man is concerned about the things of this world or the things of the world and how he may please his wife and his interests are divided. Yes, I will not lie to you guys. My interests are very much so divided, knowing that I have a wife. But I would not ever, ever curse the blessing God has given me. Well, I have, admit that I have problems Um. You're very welcome, Brother Jeremy Stevens. You're very welcome. And hey there, Twisted Shots. Thank you for stopping in. I would never, ever curse God or curse my wife. I mean, me and my wife fight, but I'm very grateful and blessed to have her. Even though this life is difficult because the things I am always divided amongst and divided about and trying to figure out, and I'm always keeping my eyes, always. If you, if you guys could only understand, as a married man... I have always had a big interest in prophecy, a big enjoyment in biblical prophecy, but if people truly only understood how much I am observing the things going on in this world, I try not to get caught up in it, but I am always keeping my eyes peeled for what's to take place next because I have to be ready. I have to be ready as a man to defend my wife or to be ready to be willing to lay down my wife to protect her. All right, and that's what I will do. But what people don't understand about that verse is this: simply, do you think just laying down your life and not fighting back in defense of your wife that someone's going to leave your wife alone? No. Let me guys give you a wake up call. If someone's going to try to kill your wife or kill you or persecute persecuting you, I'm called as a husband. I'm called as a man, and God tells men to love their wives as Christ loved the church. All right, and so I will very clearly, very firmly tell you that Christ doesn't expect you to roll over like a deadbeat lamb and just take it and be beat on or killed because you have a wife you have to protect. You may have kids you have to protect, and you very firmly need to do what you're called to do as a husband. God doesn't expect you to lay down and die, but here's a simple fact. I have a wife, and I'll forgive my phrasing, guys. I'll be darned or danged. Before any man, because the command that God gives me to lay, be willing to lay down my wife, or not my, not my wife, be willing to lay down my life and protection and love for my wife, all right? I will gladly, in a heartbeat, pick up arms or pick up my fists and fight to the fullest extent that I don't ever fight, hardly ever anymore. I will fight to every physical strength and fiber of my being in defense of my wife to fight and protect her if anyone thinks that they will lay a hand on my wife in harm. That is just who I am, and that is what I'm called to do. I will never, ever allow anyone to touch my wife, and I don't even know biblically 
truly, honestly, what is honestly sound in the case of when it concerns physical persecution for my faith. I know I have no pr problem laying down my life for Christ if it comes to it. That don't bother me. But what people don't understand is as a Christian, this world alone is not going to do nice things to a woman. People who serve the Antichrist, people who serve the world, people who serve Satan will never do nice things to a woman once they've killed you as a man. If you're a man and they kill you, they will never treat your women or your wife or your daughter with any form of proper respect. They're not going to honor a deal because they're children of Satan. They're going to flat out do things. They're going to basically commit the R word. The R word ends with an E and it, or ends with a P and an E. And I don't like the word because it agitates the crap out of me. And trust me, I'm sooner to literally, no joke, I'm sooner to castrate a guy that tries to think that they're going to lay their hands on me or my wife in that regard. Not so much me, but my wife. I'm sooner to castrate a guy because in, her, in my wife's defense, I, I'd sooner do that to protect her at the end of the day. Because I know if it came down to persecution, I have no problem dying for God. But I also know that as a man... I'm going to do every fiber I can to protect my wife. Hey, Jeremy, thank you for the alert, dude. I do appreciate you. Um, I'll be lurking, going to study a bit, and maybe spend some time with my family. Hey, dude, not a problem, man, not a problem. But like I said, I am not here to speak hate. But like I said, we are told to be willing to lay down our lives for Christ. I have no problem doing that. My life, I've already lost almost once, physically. The pain, sadly, I don't remember the pain. So I can't tell you that you won't really know about the pain as it's happening. Because sometimes pain happens so quickly that you don't register it and won't ever really know it. But I will tell you this. I'm not worried about it. Because I'm only here by His grace on that front. Let me get back to this. About the, all right, so, but he may please the Lord, but that married man is concerned about the things of this world. So the married man is always going to be concerned about the things of this world because he's always going to have his attention divided. How he may please his wife and his interests are divided. The unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the things of the Lord so that she may be holy in body and in spirit, but the married woman is concerned about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am saying this for your own benefit, not to put a restraint on you, but to promote what is proper, and so that you may be devoted to the Lord without distraction. I'll be honest, I love my wife, but part of me honestly wishes I would have listened to my family and my faith when I was younger. And chose to seek out God with all my heart and soul and mind and strength as a young man. And not got married. But at the same time, I won't curse the gift that God's given me. Wish it would have could as and should as are two different things. You know, or multiple different things. And so I'm not going to curse what God has given me now. I'm grateful to have. If any man thinks he is acting inappropriate appropriately towards the virgin he is engaged to. If she is... Mm -hmm, any man thinks he is acting inappropriately towards the virgin he is engaged to. If she is getting beyond the usual age for marriage and he feels he should marry, he can do what he wants. Just what it is. Um, because after a certain time and after a certain amount of time of people living together in a certain state or certain states in general, six months is how it is in Texas. Six months living together, you're considered married by Texas law. But there's a certain catch within that. I think last time I checked, it was five, five to ten years here in Indiana, but apparently that law has actually done away with, I guess. There's apparently certain changes that have happened. I, that's an old, old law, though. So I don't know how many laws have changed or what the laws are for different states, but I think it's less than eight years now in the state. He is not sinning. They can get married. But he who stands firm in his heart, who is under no compulsion, but has control over his own will, and has decided in his heart to keep her as his fiance will do well. So then he who marries his fiance does well, but he who does not marry will do better. A wife is bound as long as her husband is living. 
But if her husband dies, she is free to be married to anyone she wants, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she marries as she is. Or not marries. She is happier if she remains as she is, in my opinion. And I think that I also have the Spirit of God. <laughs> Again, that was Paul speaking. I still think they could have had a far greater and better um, wording than these more modern translations. It's not that I should have, I think, it should, I do have the Spirit of God, is what it should have said. But yeah, we ain't going to go there. We'll read one more chapter, um, and then we'll actually move on to other stuff, guys. Um, but thank you all for coming in. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys, so thank you all so very much. Um, give me a minute, let me check how long I've been live. Oh, I've been live for an hour already. All right, well, let me read this last chapter and then I'll bookmark the next chapter and then we'll go about it. I will stop doing talking points and I'll just read. Chapter eight, now about food, sacrifice to idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. This is true. Knowledge definitely puffs up. But love builds up. If anyone thinks he knows anything, he does not yet know it as he ought to. But if anyone loves God, he is known by him. And eating food sacrificed to idols, then we know that an idol is nothing. An idol or a false god or a handmade and hand-built god is nothing. Is nothing to us and nothing in this world. Or nothing in the world. And that there is no god but for one or but one. For even if there are so-called Mockingly state, I say, so-called gods, jokingly, mockingly, laughing at the lower G gods, um, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for there is one God, the Father. All things are from him, and we exist for him, and there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, all things are through him, and we exist through him. However, not everyone has his knowledge or has this knowledge. Some have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat food sacrificed to an idol, their conscience being weak, looks like my uh, mic was being weird, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are not worse off if we don't eat. And we are not better if we do eat. But be careful that this right of yours in no way becomes a stumbling block to the weak. Well, if you're weak, I encourage you to grow. I encourage you to get strong because I'm not basically going to sacrifice a meal because you're weak-willed. Sorry, that's just me being a little harsh on people. I don't sacrifice nothing for the weak-willed when it concerns food. Um, if I'm hungry and I've not ate for what, let's say a day or two or three, I'm going to eat regardless of what it is because I know that food, that sacrificed idol food is nothing. That sacrificed food, that idol is nothing before God. That idol is nothing more than a man-made, stupid little creation. And so that food is food that came from God regardless. Um, and so in the regards, will I stand up and defend the weak? Yes, but I will not. I will not be considered uh, making a brother to stumble because he is so weak or a sister so weak that they cannot know what is what of scriptures. That is my opinion. That is not what the Lord says. That is my opinion as a brother in Christ. If a brother or a sister in Christ is so weak that they don't understand scripture, then I biblically will say that they need to go grow. They need to go endure and they need to actually endure what's happening and to endure in their faith and grow as a believer in Christ. That is all I can say because the only way you're going to grow is by enduring hardships, enduring persecution and tribulation and trial. That is the only way anyone on this earth will ever grow in their faith. Um, let me find out. Oh. So let me find where it said the week. So basically, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are not worse off if we don't eat it, and we are not better if we do eat it. See, that's the thing about food. We're not better, and we are not 
we're not worse off. But the point is, food's food, guys. Stop complaining is the way I look at it. If you're so weak in your faith, then you may need to step up and start reading the word and grow a bit, is all I can honestly God-given tell people. And that is all I will state. Um, um, but be careful that this right of yours in no way becomes a stumbling block to the weak. Well, if the weak are so weak that they stumble and it caused me to stumble because of that, then they have caused me to sin because they are weak enough in their faith that they don't see the scriptures for what it is, even though I've showed it to them. Um, for if someone sees you, the one who has knowledge, dining in an idol's temple, won't, won't his weak conscience be encouraged to eat food offered to idols? So the weak person, the brother or sister for whom Christ died, is ruined. No, they're not ruined. They'll just grow in time. This is Paul speaking. Um, by your knowledge. Um, the, so the weak person, the brother or sister for whom Christ died, is ruined by your knowledge. Now when you sin like this against brothers and sisters and wound their weak conscience... You are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother or sister to fall, I will never again eat meat so that I won't cause my brother... Ha <laughs> ha, Paul. I love you, Paul, but I'll, I'll always eat meat regardless of how much crybabies are on this earth and vegans who want to cry. Meat's not of God. Meat's not of God. Boo-hoo. Cry me a river. Get over it. Yeah, this is me going to be a little mocking of the vegans. Meat's of God, and you vegan, weak little crybabies can get over it. I'll eat meat all day long because guess what? Meat's good. Meat is nourishing. Meat is good, awesome, and delicious, and I could care less. And I'm sorry if people are so weak-willed and weak-minded when it concerns the thoughts of what food is good and what food is, food is bad, then I feel bad for them. I seriously, seriously, seriously feel bad for them. And I pray God will actually strengthen them because they need they need to be strengthened in the word of God and faith. Now, will I say a salad is bad? No. No, I will not. I love salads, but I will also tell you that I love bacon bits on my salads. I love boiled eggs crumbled up and put on my salads. Let's see what else I like in my salads. Um, and how, oh man, I want a salad now. God bless it. And I haven't ate yet. Um, and I don't even have a salad in the house right now. Um, there's a couple other things. Oh, chopped up olives. Great in a salad. Um, point is, guys, there's nothing wrong with meat. Do I hate salads? Do, no, I don't hate salads. I like certain vegetables, but I also hate certain other vegetables because I think they're gross and they taste bad and it's a, it's a freaking texture issue and a taste issue. Um, but I will state that there's nothing wrong with um, salads. There's nothing wrong with eating vegetables, but your body, your physique, everything about you will always be weak because you refuse to ever eat meat. Meat came from God. Meat is good. God made meat, and I'll always eat meat. It's that simple. It don't matter what type of meat it is, whether it's a uh, crawl dad, whether it's a shrimp, whether it is, it don't matter. It could be a multitude, multitude of things out there. Crab. I like crab, um, crab cakes specifically. Those things are delicious. Now I won't eat crab just as crab, but crab cakes with sour cream and whatever else is in it. Mwah, delicious. Um, but like I said, guys, I can't do that. Paul might. I'll never make an oath like that, ever. Because meat's too good to not want to enjoy. So, Paul can make that oath. I will not. Alright, guys. I do thank everyone for stopping in and visiting me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end my Bible reading. But like I said, guys, um, for those who actually are willing to spend time in my actual stream... It will be those whom I gift actual subs to my channel um, on the actual thing this coming 15th when I get my payout. Um, I'm going to have to take out 20% from last month because I forgot to do that last month for taxes. Um, 
And now I'm going to take 20 freaking percent out again for this month. But that's fine. I won't even have $100 to live on. God is good. We had $1,000 this month. So I'll make do with what I've got. And it's mainly because of my wife. And I'm thankful for her. And I'm thankful for Brother Jeremy for the 175 that he sent me and my wife to cover all the costs for building that computer. Sorry, Brother Jeremy, I've yet to get it sent out. Right now, I'm working on trying to actually get a ride to get it shipped or taken to the post office. I can honestly do nothing um, until I get a ride, but I will just have this on this for the time being. I do ask everybody to forgive me. I will keep talking, um, but as soon as I get that ride, it will be shipped out. I will pay for insurance for it to be shipped out. I will pay for the shipping. And then I also need to give the viewers who actually participate and spend time on my channel almost daily with me. It'll be those. Yeah, I'm going to show favoritism. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. But those who actually show, show full support to my channel will be the ones who actually get the subscription. That means Broken Envy, Brother Jeremy, Theatine, um, Nicole, Foxhound, um, Twisted Shots, if you want to spend time in here on a regular basis, you're going to be getting one. I'll probably wait until later on this evening or tomorrow to give one um, to you, but I will definitely get one out. I'm going to... Oh. Dude, you're good. You're good, man. You're good. I actually... Um, Mess messaging open for points that works oh no 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 that that's fine um I, I i did it for those who are in my community who are actually a part of the ones i love and i'm grateful for and i'm thankful for i don't even remember activating it but i apparently left it out on there but i did it so that way family in christ and my people or my family here can actually communicate with me i if it's too high of a cost i'm actually going to lower the cost to a reasonable amount for those who actually don't have subs and who are actually a part of my community to send out messages, you know? Um, well, when I say a part of my, well, yeah, part of my community and who I can't always gift everybody a sub because I don't always make a lot, but I do know when I start making a lot, I've decided that I'm going to start gifting actual subs to everybody in my community to, to thank them for the support because I know a lot of people in my community are low income. And sadly can't afford a lot, guys. And I get that and I understand it. So like I said, to heck with my troubles financially. But at the end of the day, sooner or later, God will handle it and God will take care of it, you know? So I've got a prime sub that I'm probably going to allow my wife to use um, to help this channel. But I'm also going to go ahead and give Brother um, Ron, or brother Broken Envy or AI Ronan a... Um, sub to his channel to support him monthly and we'll figure out how we're going to go from there you know because he's been in here supporting me almost daily so thank you broken i am very grateful to you and i'm grateful to each and every person um so give me a minute i need to go ahead and get that done before i end my stream actually um i gotta figure out how to gift people subs <laughs> myself um there we go i found it so gift a sub. I know the ones I'm actually going to gift to real quick. So give me a minute, guys. Um, I said I was going to roughly spend about $25 doing this or so. At least try to give as many, yeah, what I do. There we go. Um, so we're going to do it to J. Stevens here first. And then I'll get to the other ones here in a second. Oh, it's Jay Stefan, not Steven Stevens. I'm sorry, Jay Steph or Jay Stefan. I've been calling you Jay Stevens. I do terribly apologize, dude. Okay, that was definitely you. Just I was making sure that was 100% your your uh, name. Mm. 
Hmm. Wait, really? That bite. All right, give me a minute. I gotta figure out why I cannot gift. Um, uh, give me a moment. Moment. Get this specific user. Let's see if I can find Theatine. Alright, that does kind of bite. Um, I might have to wait a bit, guys, because I'm not able to get. I'll have to have my wife. I'll, I'll have my wife log in here in a bit later on, and I'll have her actually start gifting to certain people, okay? Because I cannot do it for God only knows what reason to specific people, and it's kind of frustrating. Um, I wanted to gift to a certain group of people. Let me see if I can gift one to um, Nicole. Is that my wife? I have input. Yeah, babe. Can you go get on your computer and see if you can help me gift to people to my channel? And we'll gift them some subs. I'm to Which one, Ash? Esper. Oh, Esper. He says, I don't want you to find that Give me a minute, guys. I'm working on this for you. Because it won't allow me to gift it to him for whatever reason. And I'm wanting to gift to my community. So. No, I just yeah, and I know. And I'm sorry, babe. Please forgive me. I will help the community by doing this. But I can't do it for everybody if you catch my drift, guys. So please forgive me on that endeavor. What? Why? Also, your prime sub is for you, babe. You'll be able to do what you want with it. I'm leaving it be now, so we'll just see if I can go to AI here. You don't need a controller, babe. Oh, well, why is your mouse dead? So apparently you have an obsession with uh, Samurai now, don't you there, Broken? Alright, so I can gift you a sub there, um, Broken, so give me a minute. Hey babe, do you mind pausing that? I heard that in the background, so give me a minute guys and we'll get her... Hmm, not my fault. Um, so give me a minute. I'm going to try to find my other people out of here. For Twitch? I'm going to beat her, guys. <laughs> Literally, I'm going to beat her. Alright, let's see if I can find Foxhound here and give Foxhound one. He's been in... Or no, you're good, babe. Making sure I got the right. All right, there we go. I can gift you one there, Foxhound. Thank you again for your support, my dude.
Get to a specific viewer. It's really going to frustrate me not being able to gift Thea to you. And I want to see if I can actually gift Nicole. I got to find her username in my Discord so that I can copy and paste it. All right, I need, I'm going to send a message to you um, with people's names, and then I would like you to try to find them on, come to my channel on Twitch, and I want you to try to start gifting people a sub. I don't know how. That's what you're saying. Then I will come to you and help you in a moment. And I get that, babe. Please be patient. You'll still play Fallout, all right? So let's see if I can gift Nicole one. Coffee sounds so good right now, though. Just take well, I'm sorry, babe. Yeah, no, you can't have coffee. I'll remember that then. Give me a minute, guys, and we'll go ahead and turn this back on to where you guys will be able to see me. So it's my fault. <laughs> I'm trying to find Nicole's username so I can gift her one. I'm trying to gift Theatine one as well, but I'm kind of having issues. I'm going to find out what's going on, and I might not be able to from my end. It's probably because I've never been subbed before. I wonder if I can gift Pat Kill one, though. There she is. There she is. We found her. I think that's her profile, I hope. Unless that... Let me go to my moderators. <laughs> I don't remember who my mods are. That's bad. Hmm. Stream elements. Come on. Come on. Chatbot, no, user management. Let me see here. Nicole loves Lotor 2. Naisha, let's see if that was the right name. I'm almost 100% certain that's who that was, but we'll find out. Come on, where are you at, Nicole? Because I don't know, and I might not be able to because they've never gifted something before, babe. Because I have big ears, babe. You've always known that. I've been able to hear pins drop while I'm in high school in locations I shouldn't be able to. So, And I can still hear you. Quit being a smart aleck, butthole. I mean, you kind of are. Kind of are. Yeah, you're mouthing off, butthead. Mm. Well, maybe I'll find her. Maybe that was her actual new channel. I don't know. Check my 
this court again, guys. I don't think it's her. No, that ain't her. It's yeah, she's using a different name. So, I gotta find that one. That's the problem. Or yet simpler fix. This will work, folks. There. Why am I being an idiot? I don't know. We'll just blame. You! Wow, well, yeah, we can gift her. Sorry to have it. Uh, I don't know yet. I know I'm g trying to gift the lower income parts of my community a sub because, yeah. I know I'm not gifting a whole crap ton because I can't afford it. I don't have a lot of money, so... Hey there, Rockstar. Hope you're doing good, dude. Thanks for stopping in. And yes, you'll be gifted one too, man. You've been in here almost every day, so give me a minute. Mm, yeah, we'll just do that. Coffee sounds good and relaxing right about now, and I don't know why. But this is me doing what I do, this is me who I am, because so many people want to badmouth me, this has nothing to do with that, but what they don't understand is I'm not a bad person. Unlike some people, I'm willing to give gifts to my community. I've gave a lot more in money alone in the last several months to my community and people in my community and helped people than what people realize. I'm one of those streamers that do and will give probably more than what any other streamer will probably ever give. Because that's who I am. I don't need every ounce of money on this earth. And what I keep trying to push and what I keep trying to remind people is the bigger and greater I grow here on Twitch and YouTube, it just means more gifts to my community. And one day my goal is to be able to give everyone, literally at one time, everyone in my community at one single time gifts. That is my ultimate end game goal. Because I should not have to only be able to select a few at a time. I should be able to bring in enough money and be able to do it like I'm dreaming and desiring to do, to be able to gift to people. What was I telling I've already did I've already paid her one let me see here. Um I should be able to make enough money here on Twitch to be able to actually that and YouTube. So that way I can actually give everybody in my community a freaking a gift at once. That's what I desire. And that's what I think should happen. But so many people don't seem to care about the goodness of certain people. They want to run their mouth and overload their butts and try to cast a check they can't handle. And that's just how people are in society. Um, check your username. That's your face. We're good. Uh, come on, darn it. No, let me copy and paste that guy so that way I can do this again. I just want to be fuddy-duddy. Dinkle! No, I can't do it. Huh? Oh, well. And, and instantly unlock your first gift or badge. Yeah, I can't gift him a gift, and I don't know why. Oh, well. Um, I was going to, so my apology, dude. Still can't gift you one either, and I don't know why. So let me see who else is in my channel that I like giving gifts to and supporting. Um, my wife has a Prime she can use, so she ain't got to deal with it. Um, you know what? I got someone I can give a gift to. Let me change recipient. Make sure he's online right now. No, D Gregs ain't online. No, D Gregs, where'd you go, dude? Okay, yep, that is him. I was just making sure. What's up, babe? Nothing. Just 
Sky? Yeah, we Cloud? we could go down a whole list of Airplane. things. That, yeah, but we're Dog. not going to. Butterflies. Pick one. I'd rather not. I missed why it says Z and then TV. There you go, D. Gregs. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you for your support. Thank you for just being here and spending time with me. I do appreciate you. And then I'm gonna go try to gift my buddy Pat Kill Nine One, and then I will gift. Um, Ash, no, she's had me concerned for a bit, and then I will gift my buddy Matthew one as well. Um, get the sub. I don't know, but she's kind of got me concerned. Um, Pat Kill 09. Let me make sure that's... I gotta make sure of that one real quick, because there's a lot of people in here that can switch things up here. Just making sure that was definitely your username there, Pat. And then I'm going to go ahead and give you and I also got to give my buddy Matthew a sub as well. Um, I don't know who you are, but okay. Um, come on, Pat Killer. You at, dude. Come on, Pat Kill. Come on, buddy. Death Joker's right there. I could definitely give him a sub, but I've not seen him in like forever. But I do talk to him every now and then, you know? Mm. Kufan was their original account. It's kind of heartbreaking she's no longer on that account because she lost it. Um... Come on, where's it at, people? I would gift you one, Theatine, but I've never... I, I, I can't gift you one because you've never actually given one before. For whatever reason, it ain't allowing me to. So, my apology, dude. Um, if I did, I'd have to do it anonymously, I think. Kill nine, there you are, and it's not O nine, and there's his actual image. So that was the wrong person I was gonna gift to give or give a gift to. So no. Yep, there it is. We're good. Now again, I will state. Not a lot of streamers do what I do, and that's fine. This is what sets me apart from the others. My wife's on here. Hey, alternate. How you doing, man? I won't be alive for much longer, dude. Um, but... Witcher's awesome, even though I'm not too sure how I feel about the whole um, new actor thing. I'm a little unsure about that one, you know, guys? Oh, okay. Not a problem. Um, game of game! There you are, dude. That's my buddy, Matthew. And someone I've considered like a brother to me for the last 14 plus years. So, like I said, I'm not giving a lot of gifts out today, guys. But I'm gifting a gift out to those whom I can. And in the future, I will maybe, God be willing, give out more. But like I said, starting God be willing, that won't be bringing probably much for the next several months. And that's fine. 
most of my gifts that I give out will probably no longer be games or other stuff. I'm just going to give gifts to my entire community here on Twitch. Everybody who is a part of my family in my current community, if I start bringing in enough every month on Twitch, this is what my Twitch community will look forward to. They will no longer have to actually subscribe to me. They will actually just be given gifted subs from me personally every month if I reach my goal. That is my desire. The more I grow on Twitch, my community will be gifted subs. For the larger I grow and the bigger I grow, that's what they that's what they look forward to getting. Um, I gave Matthew a sub, correct? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Hey, Happy, I hope you're doing good, man. Um, what's up? Do you want this? What is it, coffee? Yeah. Thank you. I coffee. I coffee. Yay. Homemade. You happy? Yep. You're going to stop saying, I want coffee for five hours? Coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> I seen Nicole's name. That's why I did that. Coffee. And hey there, alternate gaming. I hope you're doing well, man. Um, also, thank you for stopping in. And thank you for, thank you there, Timmy, for stopping in. I know I'm not the greatest guy out there. I try to be the best man of God I can be, but I'm only human. I reach a fed up point. I can be harsh at times. you got to realize I do have a lot of mental health issues. I am nowhere near perfect. I do love my faith, but one, people need, one thing people need to understand is I have a big heart, and my big heart will probably be my own destruction one day. Okay? I can also be very cruel when I'm pushed to come when push comes to shove, and that's only because of what I've been through in my life, and that's because of PTSD when I lock myself down my emotion wise. Not that I should be doing that, but if I feel like people um, have breached a barrier, I uh, I am um, locked down for my own safety precautions. So. Thank you guys, and yes, because you guys are my family in Christ, I've already gifted one to um, dgregs.tv. You guys will be my last two subscribers because I can't give Theatine anything like I want to. I don't know how many I've given out today, but I don't think it's much. Um, Guess what? What? You're stuck with me all day tomorrow. That's fine, babe. That just means um, I get to spend time with my wife, so that is perfect. So one... Mm. Two, um, three. Does this make you happy? Yes, thank you. Four is pack kill. Were you going to complain till you got coffee? No, I was just giving you crap. Five was my buddy Matthew. What's in this? All right, so I'll give two what? more. Epi Timmy you know, and alternate. Cup. You guys are getting one. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Like also, I said... Hmm? That was in the kitchen. My and cell phone? Yeah. The cereal, mm. the milk needs drink so we can have breakfast for supper. Mm-hmm. Not a problem, then. It expires in two days. Like the milk? Yes, both of them. Well, last time I had milk, my, my one of my teeth kind of hurt because of the fact that, yeah, it was cold. Ice cold. <laughs> well, it's got to be drinking the next two days. Uh-huh. So two gallons. So, alternate we'll game. Be having cereal. All right, there you go, alternate gaming, and I cannot gift you one either, as you can see. I hope you can. No, you cannot. So let me just show the page for you. Pull up the window page. God bless it. Did I just really accidentally switch to that? Darn it. Give me a minute, guys. Be nice, window. Be nice. Alright, there you guys go. As you can see, alternate gaming, I cannot, for whatever reason, gift you a thing. Don't know why, but I'll try it again. Maybe I misspelled your name by accident? That's a possibility. No, I don't think I did. Yeah, no, I can't do it. So that's my apology. Please forgive me, or you would have got one. 
It says, sorry, a gift subscription to this channel is not available for this user. I don't know why, or you would have been on the list to get one. For those who have that come up on this, I am sorry, um, or I would give you guys the gift. Uh, let me try Epi Timmy now and give Tim one if I can. Mm. Epi Timmy. I don't know why, but that name sounds cool. <laughs> Epi Timmy. It sounds like Timmy from. Um, what was that cartoon growing up in the 90s? Yes, Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> and then there was Timmy. Well, there's another one too, or was that? There was no. That was something different. Jimmy Neutron is what I was thinking. Of. That was the other one. Thank you, babe. God, I'm old if I'm forgetting those names. So yes, brother Epi and Timmy, you can receive one. Um, or I would give um, Alternate Gaming one in a heartbeat if I could. Alternate, please forgive me. I do apologize. Um, it's not available to be gifted. Um, but there you go, Epi. God bless you guys. Um, like I said, I don't have a lot of money. Near to me and my wife, most of the money my wife has got this month is money she has made. I've got money from building the computer I built for my brother Jeremy. And then... Um, Sadly, uh, I only got 225 or 250 something, I think, this month because Twitch decided they were going to be a bum holios and decided they were going to take money from another low budget small streamer when I barely made 500. 254 or 255 dollars is hardly anything, and that's even after I take taxes out of my income. So I've got to take 20% out of my income. That hurts quite a bit. So I hardly have anything to live on. And I forgot to take money out last month, which is my screw up, honestly. Because there's a lot of stuff going on. And so I've got to double dip on taxes and take taxes out for last month out of this check on top of this month's 20%. So it is what it is. God is good. We'll get through it nonetheless. Love you guys. God bless. I'm actually ending, ending this whole Bible stream Starting as of this month, continuing onward, I will no longer give big gifts, but what I will do if I reach every sub goal I have a desire of, I will actually just start gifting my entire community subs. That's the only thing I can do, and that's one thing I can do freely and without an issue, you know? Anyhow, guys, God bless you. Take care and later.